Hi, hello, and welcome back. Or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Heather, and this video is all about months 13 through 17 of my treatment with Spervato. I know it's been a long time. I'll explain in a minute. Spervato is an FDA-approved treatment for treatment-resistant depression that's derived from part of the ketamine molecule. One of the main side effects during treatment is dissociation, and I just so happen to have a dissociative disorder. So in this series, I share my experiences and tips and tricks that I've learned along the way and my overall progress as I undergo this treatment. In the description of this video, you'll find links to a playlist with all of my Spravato videos, as well as my top 10 tips and tricks for treatment, and my tried and true playlist of breathing exercises, guided meditations, and music that totally transformed my treatment experiences. I'm currently in the maintenance phase of treatment, meaning I go once every three to four weeks just to keep my depression in remission. But Heather, why haven't you updated us in five months? Fair. Fair. Let's talk about it. Quick little trigger warning. I am gonna be talking about PTSD and substance use. Yeah, we're going there. You guys know that I always try to be very open and honest about things that are going on in my life that are affecting my mental health. And the truth is, I haven't been doing so well these last few months, thanks to a perfect storm of contributing factors. So let's see, August, which was my last update, September and October, doing great. My PHQ-9 stayed at like 1 or 2 out of 27. All good. November was going great as well until something pretty traumatic happened to me. Now, the event in and of itself was traumatic, but it also had a lot of similarities to the kinds of trauma that I still have PTSD from. So that was very destabilizing for me. To the point where I was not functioning well at all, especially not in the ways that are needed for me to make videos. It was pretty bad. I even started drinking again daily, or if not drinking, then using cannabis. And I hadn't drank since 2018. I would say from my late teens to very early 30s, I drink every day as a way to sort of manage or cope with my PTSD symptoms. Now, thankfully, in 2018, I was able to stop drinking and switch to cannabis instead. But most notably, my desire to drink, totally gone. Like, I was over it. I was very lucky, I think, in that regard that once I stopped drinking, I didn't have any desire to do it again. When I started Spervato back in August of 2022, I stopped using cannabis. And thankfully, my desire to use that went away pretty quickly, too. And I think that's because the way that I felt after starting Spervato, or like once it started really working for me, was the way that I was always trying to feel using alcohol and cannabis. A number of years ago, I saw a video on YouTube of someone describing what depression feels like. And the way that they described it was like being in a bathtub in a cold bathroom and the warm bath water is draining out. And you're just left feeling cold, wet, naked, just miserable. This is what depression feels like. So for all of those years, I was using alcohol and cannabis to either fill up the tub temporarily or just not care that it was empty. But once Spervato started really working for me, it was like my tub was full all the time. But after the traumatic event in November, it felt like I was in an empty bathtub again. And using all of my mental energy to try to block out what had happened. And I turned to alcohol and cannabis again to try to feel like my tub was full. So about a week after that incident, I had another Spravato session. And I wasn't able to do the full dose. I have no clue what happened. I think this was my, like, 34th treatment. So, like, I'm very well aware 
of what Spravato feels like for me. But after the second dose, it was so intense and felt so unlike any of my other treatments. My body felt really weird. It just wasn't good. And I remember thinking to myself, if I do the third dose, I'm not coming back. Just a spravato thought. Obviously, that wouldn't really happen, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't do the full dose. It was way too much for me. And the nurse was really cool and was like, yeah, no, if you feel like it's too much, don't do it. No need to push yourself. Now, like I said, this was November. I live in the Pacific Northwest. Prior to Spravato, I not only struggled with severe chronic depression, but my seasonal depression was 10 times worse. So I'm sure that factored into my overall declining mental health. And to top it all off, I had to cancel my December appointment. So between having a traumatic experience, not having a full dose of Spravato since October, it being the winter here in the Pacific Northwest, and missing my December treatment? Not at all surprising that my PHQ-9 score jumped up to 9 out of 27 by my next treatment on January 6th. Thankfully, that treatment was fine. Everything went as expected, and I was able to do the full dose. Now, here's the good news. After that treatment on January 6th, I wouldn't say that I felt better, but... I did notice that I was able to handle minor inconveniences without having a full-on meltdown. For example, we got a new puppy back in December and we've really been struggling with potty training and I was in tears every day, just at my wits end. I was not handling it very well at all. After the treatment on January 6th, all of the setbacks and cleaning up pee all day didn't feel quite so soul crushing anymore. Like I was able to roll with it and just say, whatever, we'll get the carpets cleaned after he's potty trained. It's not a big deal. I was also able to make a video, which huge improvement, especially since I had spent all of December thinking that I was done with YouTube, that I just didn't have it in me anymore and almost deleted my channel. So glad I didn't. Then I had another treatment on January 27th. And at that one, my PHQ-9 was five out of 27. So we're moving in the right direction. That treatment went well. I spent it mostly exploring a fantasy world combination of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, It Takes Two, and The Borrowers. I don't know what it is with me just wanting to be tiny. I also kept coming back to the experience I had during my, I think, third treatment with Karen in the underworld and realizing I didn't need to carry all of these traumas with me and that they were just slowing me down and how I felt noticeably better after that treatment. Even walking out of that session on January 27th, I felt noticeably better, significantly better, actually. Two hours later, after the spravato had totally worn off, my bathtub was full again. I again have that general feeling that life is good and things are going to be okay. I have all of my motivation back, as well as my desire and ability to be creative. I can feel joy and pleasure doing the things that I enjoy doing. And zero desire to drink or use cannabis. Baby, I'm back. So that's what's been going on with me. Having that little relapse felt terrible, but on the plus side has shown me that I'm probably going to be one of those people who has to continue doing Spravato like once a month for years to stay in remission, which is nothing compared to taking antidepressants every day that don't work on me anyway. And it's shown me that Spravato is still effective for me. You know, a year and a half and 36 treatments in. Very good news. I also have a renewed sense of gratitude for how good I feel. I'd been feeling good for so long that I was taking it for granted. And I'm not sure what this is yet, but 
I feel like I've gained something from re-experiencing the emotions and thoughts and mindset that led me to rely on substances in the past and recently. I feel like I understand it so much more and better appreciate the agonizing pain I was in that led me to do those things or rely on those things and the brain chemistry I was up against. If I was someone who had never experienced depression and had always felt the way that I do now after having done Spravato, there's no way I'd ever be able to really fathom what living with depression is like day in and day out and just how much it hijacks your body and mind and soul. So my battery died and I completely lost my train of thought. I think most importantly, these last few months have shown me that should I find myself in a similar situation again, I know I don't have to live there indefinitely. I was so worried that this traumatic experience had somehow completely undone all of the progress that I've made in this last year and a half with Spravato. But thankfully, that isn't the case. And I feel like I also understand and can plan more for what I would need to get me out of that sort of dark place should I end up there again. You know, as of right now, Spravato is only approved to treat treatment-resistant depression, but I wouldn't be surprised if any day now we start hearing about how it's effective at treating PTSD, or at least helping to alleviate a lot of the symptoms. At least that's been my experience. So yeah, that's what's been going on with me these last five months. If you clicked on this video looking for a more in-depth account of what the actual treatment experiences are like for me, I suggest going and watching a lot of my earlier Spravato videos. And with that, I'll be seeing you guys again very, very soon. Oh, let me go get the new puppy. I mentioned him and you might not have seen my last video because it was about UFO stuff. Be right back. Tell me again. This is Lalo. Get that out of my face. Oliver's nearly a full grown pug now. Let me go grab him. Look at this big boy. Fine specimen of a pug. Okay, he wants to go play with Lalo. Bye!